From our studios in New York, here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. She faced illness and fear and conquered them both. Multi-platinum, multi-Grammy winner, Melissa Etheridge. It was a year ago this month that she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and it was here on Dateline that she talked about it publicly for the first time. Tonight, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, she reveals new details about her battle with the disease, including her decision to use a controversial drug to help her get through chemotherapy. She's been busy lending her name and famous voice to the race for the cure, all those runs raising money for research. And for the first time in prime time, she sings her new song dedicated to the cause. I run for hope. I run to feel. I run for the truth. If anyone can turn a bout with breast cancer and all the fear and despair it brings into an anthem of hope, it's Melissa Etheridge, cancer-free and feeling stronger than ever. And they cut into my skin and they cut into my body, but they will never get a piece of my soul. The day you're diagnosed with cancer is not one to celebrate, <laughs> but it's been a year. Is this a happy anniversary? Happy, yeah. Happy time to look back and go, whoo, look at this year. What a year. My goodness. We can get through anything. The hair is back. How about that? A little longer than mine. Yeah. Now make you feel like you were the only one. Last February, she took the stage at the Grammy Awards without any of her trademark blonde hair and blew the crowd away. Her performance was another coming out, the rock star and gay icon showing the world that she was also a cancer survivor. She had just completed 10 agonizing weeks of chemotherapy and was still getting radiation treatment. Yet somehow she summoned the strength to smile and scream. No, you got it! Wow! Cool. A huge relief. Wow. I had such a good time on the Grammys. <laughs> Three days after that showstopper at her home in Los Angeles, Melissa spoke for the first time about the tumor she discovered in the shower last fall and the treatment that followed. It's the, it's the closest to death I have ever been. The chemotherapy takes you as far down into hell as you've ever, ever been. She said she couldn't have gotten through it without the woman she calls her wife, actress Tammy Lynn Michaels. This one is, has a gift of humor and comedy. When I was diagnosed with cancer, she'd say, well, hello, cancer pants. And when I finally did lose my hair and she shaved it and I had couple hairs here. What'd you call me, honey? Captain Steuben. Yeah. Captain Steuben. Remember from the love boat where he just had a couple right there on the side and it was just shiny? But as they told us back then, there were times during chemotherapy when laughter could not lessen the pain. When it first goes in your body, it makes your eyes cut off laughing and I couldn't really see in her anymore. So by the time we would get her home from chemo, I would look at that and I would, I would know very soon on She's going down again. There were days upon days where I couldn't make a sound, where she would tell me she loved me, and I couldn't even tell her that back. She may not have been able to make a sound, but she wrote a song called This Is Not Goodbye. And sitting down with Melissa again eight months later, she played it for us. Bravely let go of my hand. I can't speak and yet you understand.
a song that came to me while I was on chemo. I was thinking, wow, it's like every time I'm just getting better and I start to come up, I know that in two days I'm going to get that stuff put back into me and I'm going to go away. And this is hard. Even though I'm in the same room with my loved one, I can't talk to her. I can't move. I can't. She can't touch me. It hurts to touch me. And that's really, really hard. So I wanted to write a song about it. You know, I know it's hard for you, but I'll be back. This is not goodbye. This, I'm not. I'm not checking out here at all. This is not goodbye. No primal screams. <laughs> but how good does it feel to be singing a song, knowing that? You're nowhere close to goodbye. Real good. That's our bedroom right there. And I won't she was one of some 200,000 American women diagnosed with breast cancer last year. And like so many others, she knows the cancer could return. So for at least five years, she'll be taking a daily dose of the anti-cancer drug tamoxifen. She's changed her diet, eating less junk food, and doing her best to cut down on something else. Melissa believes a history of cancer in her family isn't the only explanation for why she got sick. I think I've been on a path ever since I was born, a, a path of, of high stress. I put myself, I put my career with a big old juicy carrot right in front of me for all of my life. I started playing in bars when I was 11, and I never stopped until I was 43 years old and diagnosed with breast cancer was the first time I canceled everything and laid in my room for weeks. It took cancer for Melissa to stop putting career and a lifetime of pleasing others ahead of her own well-being. Cancer is like the ultimate excuse. Who's going to say, oh, no, you have to show up for this moment? Hey, I got cancer. I can't be there. It's the ultimate eraser. So the diagnosis instantly vented all that stress. Oh, yeah. Instantly. I mean, it, it's like you just blow up. It's the most stressful thing ever. Oh, my God, I might die. And all those... All those uh, fears that you have, that, oh my gosh, what, what if something horrible ever happened to me? Well, something horrible happened to me, and you know what? My life became very simple, and it cleared up, and I had a completely blank slate, and I can build it now the way I want to. I'm Melissa Etheridge, I'm 44 years old, and I'm a breast cancer survivor. <laughs> In the life she's building now, Melissa is making time to speak out and to raise money for the fight against breast cancer. But there's one part of her story she has never talked about publicly, until now. A controversial choice she made to help with the harsh side effects of chemo. I decided instead of signing up for the drugs, that well, there's the, the drug that you take for the pain, but that constipates you, so you have to take the constipation drug, but then that actually gives you diarrhea, so you need a little diarrhea drug. Instead of taking five or six of the prescriptions, I decided to go a natural route and um, smoke marijuana. Medicinal marijuana. Medicinal marijuana, absolutely. Every doctor I talked to that I asked about it, any complications, they said that's the best thing to do. The doctors know. You, you spoke to your doctors about oh, yeah. using marijuana? Every single one of them, every, from, from the surgeons, to the oncologist, to the radiation, every single one was, oh yeah, that's the best help for, for uh, the, the, uh, the effects of chemotherapy. While the medical community remains divided, California is one of 10 states that allows seriously ill people to use marijuana with a doctor's recommendation. But federal law prohibits the drug under any circumstances. So Melissa's doctors did not actually write a prescription. And Melissa used it despite the risk of federal prosecution. If they really wanted to come get me, really, I mean, there's so much more going on. And I, and I, I just, no, I didn't worry, but it was worth it. Smoking the marijuana proved too harsh, so early on, she switched to a vaporizer to inhale it. She says it eased her pain, restored her appetite, and lifted her depression. How often were you using it? Oh, every day. Every day? Yes. I was doing a lot of it at the time for my... Uh, pain and for my symptoms and the minute I didn't feel it it I stopped as a rock star your position on this does not come as a complete surprise <laughs> I know I know I know do you worry at all that that talking about this from a dis medicinal standpoint might encourage recreational use that, <laughs> that, that, that what, what somebody hears is 
this takes away pain, this is this brings comfort. Do I worry that it that will be abused? Yeah, I mean Vicodin's abused. Uh Everything that brings pain relief is abused, but does that mean because Vicodin is abused, do they keep it away from people? No, they prescribe it. Put the laws on it, prescribe it. Have you thought about being more vocal in the medicinal marijuana movement? Well, I guess I am now, <laughs> yes. Melissa has always followed her truth, no matter where it takes her, and often it's the road less traveled. In fact, that's the title of her latest album, released this month. It's a nod to the Robert Frost poem about diverging roads and the choices that define us. So for you, the two roads that diverged were, were what? I think that starts in high school. I saw two roads. I could stay in Kansas. I could take the road that people in my hometown would take. You'd go to college. You'd get a husband. You'd, you'd get married. That was one road. Or I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go for the craziness, and I took that road. Okay, I met lots of gay people in Hollywood. We were all very, very quiet about it in Hollywood. We didn't say anything, but you know what? I don't want to take that road. I want to, I want to, take the, I want to be myself. I took that road. Wow. Uh oh I got breast cancer. You know what? I could, I could shrink away and tell everybody to leave me alone and, and just not say anything about it, say I'm just taking a little vacation and go through this myself. Or you know what? I could be open about this, and I could let it change my life change me for the better, I'm going to take this road. This past summer, Melissa traveled a lot of roads in an RV. It was a coast-to-coast -coast tour of America, a special treat for her two children and for Tammy, who would kept her vow to be there for Melissa in sickness and in health. So let me get this straight. Was six weeks in an RV across <laughs> country with the kids her way of thanking you for all your love and support? Yes, that was my dream. It was my dream after she was done. She said, well, let's go on a vacation. Where do you want to go? Anywhere, anything, let's go. I said, baby, get me one of them big old RVs, <laughs> baby. <laughs> and you get me out of here. We're, you get me out of this town. And we're, we took off. We're from the Midwest, and a good RV trip is the, the goal <laughs> it in your the life. Best. They visited their hometowns, Melissa's in Kansas and Tammy's in Indiana. They spent a day at Dollywood in the Smoky Mountains and drove all the way to the Big Apple. It was great to feel in control of having been so out of control of my body, of my life. Being in control, driving, being in charge of taking care of just what's the next meal, where are we going, where are we staying, getting people there safe. So in your case, RV sort of stands for recovery vehicle. <laughs> yes, it, very much so. While on the road, Melissa wrote that anthem of hope for cancer patients and their families. Her message of fierce optimism delivered the best way she knows how, by singing straight from the gut. Music remains the mission. Oh, yeah. Music and, and living. I run for hope. I run to feel. I run for the truth. For all it is real. I run for your mind. Thank you very much.